Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been two crazy weeks around Europe and as promised uh, we we're talking today about how to expose the vlog with the GH5. We are going to go like for some general you know aspects of lighting and everything else that you can apply to whatever camera you have even though we're going to use the GH5 and we're going to post process the images and apply lots and see how it reacts to different lighting situations uh, hard light, soft light, daylight, exterior um, interior nights, different situations so you see how the image reacts to different kinds of exposure like you know the well-known exposed to the right method uh, versus exposing right or even what, what happens when you underexpose the image Personally, I apply a lot of these methods uh, depending on the situation. So we're going to use different methods. So you're going to see how the, the image uh, gets after that. Um, you can apply it to your own work. So guys, we have prepared a very simple setup here uh, where we have the GH5 here with the Voigtlander 25mm. We want to shoot 1.4 28 and 0 95 we want to stay like very open to have a filmic feel to the image so i have here a fixed nd filter a breakthrough filter uh, th uh, three stops and um, we're going to sort of replicate the natural light but it's so dark outside so we have this aperture 120d here okay and we're going to create some contrast because everything here is white we wanted to show you a real location because you are going to have a lot of white uh, walls and ceilings bouncing everything. So that's good because we have the grid here, very useful for these situations to direct the light and prevent the spill from the diffuser, you know. So we have here a um, black wrap to create contrast on Rene's skin. I'm going to, to have a medium close-up shot so you see how vlog reacts in different situations and um, let's see what happens then in post-production aside from that we're going to try some diffusion in the shots and we're we're going to film uh, 8 bits and 10 bits so you see the difference it's a good exercise to do because i know that technical tests are are cool are good and you should do that every time you get a new camera or you use a new camera but once that is sorted and you know the limitations and uh, you want to to know the real feel of the image on real skills so that's what we are going to do right now let's see
Ok, in this first tutorial we have shot an interior scene with dark background to see how Vlog reacts in a situation when you don't want to raise uh, nor lower your exposure in post. So let's see what happened. In general I see a pretty good image coming out from the camera in all the situations. But let's see the differences in our test. To start with, uh, I would love to tell you some tips that work great for these kind of cameras that don't have a high dynamic range. First of all, I always say that for these cameras, the flatter the better, even if you are going for contrast later in post-production. They work well in the middle areas, um, middle high areas of the image. Even in shadow areas, you should have some light and information on your waveform because when you try to lift them up, the result will be noisy and with artifacts if you have not information there. Soft lighting is going to work better than hard light because the highlight roll off is not very pleasant in these cameras. You can use diffusion, you can bounce the light, you can add on camera filters, you can add um, fill light, uh, whatever that helps the image to stay like neutral so th to speak. For every project I like to work in a lot before shooting which will give me a close idea of what's going to happen with the image. In this case the latter plate is very neutral in terms of exposure because we want to remain to the same level that the camera capture. Anyway this lot is a creative one and it protects uh, the highlights and raises the shadows a little bit too. So you see the first part is the normal exposure and uh, this is 8 bit, this is 8 bit with the LUT, this is 10 bit with LUT and with diffusion. Okay, in this case we use a, we use a different pearlescence filter, uh, a half of diffusion. And uh, it works great too to create some nicer uh, gradation areas on the skin. So it's great for this kind of cinematic look that we're looking for. Second, we have the overexposing results. We overexpose by one stop. You can see here, obviously this won't be the final image, but you know that you, you get in camera. This is the log, this is with a lot, 10 bit, and then with, with diffusion too. And this is underexposed. This is the image underexposed. We have some conclusions from this test. First of all is that 8-bit image holds well but breaks sooner and creates more artifacts. We see this part of the skin, you'll see that you have artifacts in degradation. You see that maybe you can see it because of the codec or compression or whatever but it breaks sooner than 10 bits, obviously. So I would go like 10 bits for all serious projects. I know that 8 bits holds well, but for some kind of serious work, I would go to 10 bit because maybe it's going to be seen in big screens or whatever. So I would wouldn't risk with this kind of of things like banding in the skies or all these kind of things that normally happen in 8 bit. As you see, correct exposure works pretty well and gives you a pretty clean image to work with. It is grainy, but in an organic way. However, in 8 bit, as we said before, we can see more artifacts in areas with gradients from light to shadow. This is with the correct exposure. This is 10 bit. This is diffusion. Pretty nice image from this camera, which we love. And now we're going to see the overexposed image. How many people say that you have to overexpose with the cam these cameras. So let's see what happens. So you have an overexposed image here. Obviously, we will take this back to the normal exposure later. This is 10 bits. And let, let's stop here to see what happens to my eye. And um, let's zoom here.
this is obviously <coughs> about to clip all these areas as you see in the scopes they are safe because they are not clipping but you know it's like and they don't have a lot of texture because right now they are over overexposed so let's create a curve here and take the image to the normal exposure you see when you take the overexposed image to the normal exposure you have a pretty good result let's see it closer let's play the image yeah, you see that you don't have artifacts you don't have grain here because we are working with the 10-bit image now but then what I see is that even if I go lower than this it's like I, I'm missing some texture in the highlights so maybe you are going for this for example for a beauty commercial but I like to have texture in the face you know I, I want to diffuse it by myself and uh, I want the camera to give me texture and information on the right side of the image not only in the mid-tones or or the shadows so what's interesting here is that coming back to normal size is that when you overexpose you have like a very it's a very clean image too like this one but for me it feels like a bit plasticky so to say when you see what happens with the underexposed image I know many of you are going to kill me by saying this but yeah everyone has his own method for this kind of scenes Let's see what happens when you underexpose. So let's go to 10 bit and let's see what happens in the face. This is what I feel. I feel that even if I go to the same point of light in this part of the image, I have more texture and information here than when I overexpose the image. So for me, it's, it's like more organic even if you have to deal with a bit more grain I don't dislike this kind of grain I and mean, you see the hands for example you see the hands here you see the same thing you see that there's a little bit of a plastic feel here in overexposing and even here when properly exposed The feeling here is a, like a bit more like super plastic without the details that we have here when we underexpose. I don't know if you see it in the video or the compression, but I can see it clearly here. So for this kind of scenes, I like to expose correctly for, for example, beauty shots or things where I want to avoid the grain. And I like to underexpose a bit if I want texture, for example, for a more filmic image, like here. I love this image. This is 10 bit. This is underexposed. I love this image in comparison with this one, for example, that feels to me a bit dead on the highlights. Again, this is my personal appreciation on skin tones, so it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So go for a look, test it before, nail it in the shooting and be consistent. There are many ways to get to the same point, but the most important thing is that you like it and the client like it and you know what you're doing and you have control of the image. In the next tutorial we will see a dark night interior situation when we will want to underexpose in post about 2-3 stops while getting a pretty neutral and clean image in camera.
Well guys, this has been the first part of the below exposing tutorial and this is not how you should expose, we're only telling our way, our best way because I have used different cameras in the past and I think this is the way that I take the most of the GH5 so it works perfectly for, for us so I hope you like the video, you enjoy it, you have some good tips and if you like it, please like it subscribe and follow our channel.